All right, ladies and gents, welcome back to another AutoCAD uh, software and web app video. We're going to do both two in one, okay? This is called the 3D2 drawing. Uh, we're going to do the orthographic views of the drawing, and then we'll talk about the 3D model a little bit. Uh, we'll create it in the software, but not in the web app, um, since the web app cannot do 3D work. Okay, so this is our drawing right here. Um, I've got a front view of this 3D model, which is this side right here, and I've got a top view looking down at the 3D model. I do not have a right view on this one. Um, you don't always need a third view. Sometimes you only need two. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with drawing the front face first, and then we'll go from there. So this is six inches wide, and this is one and three quarters tall. So I'll do it in the software first. Uh, you know, very similar. I'm actually going to change since I'm going to be setting up for, well, you know what? Let's leave it as top. We'll do that later. Um, so with a line tool, you're going to go six inches and then you're going to go a half inch up and then you're going to come in, but we don't know how far you're going to come in. So we're just going to draw that line until wherever. All right. So you're going to go up a half inch and you're going to bring this line in and just click it out here somewhere. Okay. Then we're going to go off of this corner and we're going to go one and three quarters. We're going to go, let's look at the plan again. So sometimes when you're looking between these views, don't forget that they have to line up on the left side. They got to line up on the right side. If there was a right view, they would line up top to top and bottom to bottom. They have to line up with each other. That way the views make sense between the views, okay, from one view to the other. So as you can see, this measurement right here, there is no measurement for that. But you can see the two hard lines from the top that create that, and you can follow up and say, okay, it's a half inch. Then as far as this circle goes, we don't know what the diameter or the radius is, but if we follow the left and right side up, we get the left and right side here, and that's a two and a half inch uh, width, which would be a two and a half inch diameter. Then you get another one of these flat pieces here, which is this, and that's a half inch as well, okay? So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go a half, then two and a half and then a half okay so back to here i'm going to go one half and i'm going to keep going laterally to the side 2.5 and then another 0.5 and then i'm going to come down at that point which tells me where that gets cut off it also gives me an extra line in here so if i go to erase this i should see this that extra line is going to be erased in a second, but first we're going to do a center diameter circle at the midpoint of that line. If you don't have midpoint turned on, type OS enter and check midpoint. And then we're going to draw that out until we get, um, well actually you don't even have to click. You can just do 2.5 for the diameter and you get something like that. All right, so now we're going to trim the top. We can get rid of this line and you end up with we actually got one more thing here. We have a fillet right here, okay? This fillet is radius one fourth. Uh, I was telling one of my students, if you can't get the fillet tool to work properly, okay, let's do it and, and show you which way it goes. Fillet, R for radius, one fourth, and you click between the two lines. Okay, now if you can't get that to go, what you can do is you can offset one fourth. So remember in the, um, software version you have to type the distance first when you're using offset so it's offset and then the distance and then enter and then you click the line and which way you want to go so you could go like this and create a one fourth one fourth and what that's going to do is it's going to give you a center of a circle which we could go like this or we could type one fourth and then you would just have to trim the parts of the circle you don't want trim the parts of the lines you don't want, and then get rid of these extra lines. Okay, so you end up with something like this. And that's what we want, all right? Now, remember, there is a one inch space between these views. So I'm gonna do an offset of one off of here. I don't need to do it off of here because I'm actually just gonna take this and stretch it out. Um, now, I don't know where the six inch mark is here, but I, I could go like this and slide up if I have F10 turned on. All right, something like that. Uh, looking at the depth of the drawing, I'm looking at front to back, how tall or how, how deep it is, is two and a quarter. So when I go to do my next offset, 2.25, you're going to go up. Let's connect the back part here and this part over here. 
and then we're going to have every half inch two and a half half so we're going to go offset and actually you don't even have to offset if you're in the line tool you could go from here slide up on the green line click the intersection if you don't have intersection turned on os enter check intersection and you can draw up like that or you could do the offsets it's really the same thing now I'm going here and I'm sliding. I could also click there and draw the line, but that would give me an extra trim that I have to do. All right, so you get something like this. Going back to the drawing, you can see that the end of the 3D model is actually rounded, and that's why this is rounded here, okay? Uh, it uses a radius 1 eighth, one and 1 eighth inch circle, um, but we gotta find the center of it first. So going off of this line that we already have, we're gonna go three quarters to get to the center of this circle and then five eighths to get to the center of that circle okay so back to our software what were those numbers i said three eight uh three quarters and five eighths so we got three quarters five eighths i hit escape spacebar that brought me back into offset then i type five eighths enter and you get something like that uh i'm going to take a line down the middle I'm going to do circle at this point, radius. Uh, it's already asking for radius, sorry. Um, and we've got this and this are a radius of 3 eighths. So we're going to do 3 eighths. And then we'll do the same thing here, radius 3 eighths. You can trim the parts of the circle that you don't want. We want to get rid of the left side of this one and the right side of this one. You can erase the lines at this point. You can connect, and then we can draw the big circles now. So those big circles, like I was saying before, you've got a radius one and one eighth. So if I go circle off of this center, and if you don't see this plus here, you can hover over this circle here and it should show you that plus. Then when you move back, you should get over to the plus or you should be able to get on it. Uh, one and one over eight. And that's one minus sign, one over eight. So you get something like this. Now we trim the left side of the circle, we trim the lines, and that part is done. Okay, now if you're one of my students, you are putting dimensions on here. I wanna see all of these dimensions, right? Uh, but the last step is that we gotta put our center lines in, and then we gotta put our hidden lines in. So remember, looking at the different views, this is orthographic views 101. If I have a front view that has center lines, and hidden lines, so this is a hidden line, center line, center line, hidden line. Those are used to describe things in other views. Just like up here in this top view, I've got a center line and I've got two center lines here. Follow those down and that's gonna show you the same location that you got from the front view going up. And that's describing what's going on in the drawing. So in these different views. So you can see this is a void, this is cut out all the way through and we need to describe that by showing with a hidden line the left side of it which comes from off of this the right side of it which comes off of this and then the centers of the two circles one two bring those down you get one two uh, this is a circle that's why we have a, a center line there carry up the left carry up the right that shows you how wide it was with the hard lines so we already have that and then you're just gonna bring up the center of it as a center line okay so here's how we do that you're going to go from here to here. You're going to go from, let's see, can we get this? We're going to go from here up. And then I'm actually going to drag this one back down. Okay, so you got that. I'm going to go off of this down. That's going to be a hidden line. Down. Hidden line. Oop, I drew that one, but that's okay. We can just trim it. And these are going to be center lines. Bring these down, center line. So that's all the lines that you need. This one and that one. By the way, when you're in the software and you're selecting multiple things, all you got to do is just keep selecting. Okay. When you're in the web app, you have to hold shift if you want to select more than one thing. So we go up to line types. We're going to go to other if it's not already loaded. We're going to go to load. And you're going to look in the left column until you see center 2.5x. We'll load that one. And then go back to load again and look for hidden 2, which is 0.5x. And hit OK. 
So that one and that one are going to be hidden lines. Those are fine just the way they are. Uh, these, they should actually overhang by a quarter. So if I grab this and start stretching, I can type one quarter like that. And it'll measure it out an extra one quarter. So they overhang, center lines overhang the actual drawing views by one fourth. At least in my world. All right. Uh, let's see, same thing over here. This one is going to go one fourth past that circle. This is going to go one fourth past the top. If I trim in the middle, this one's going to go one fourth extra. That one's going to go one fourth extra. All right. So now I don't really mind if you just select these and change them to center. Okay. They're going to look a little different than what it looks in the drawing. And that's okay. Because normally you have just one center line with a little plus where the center is. But this also means the same thing. Okay. So I'm okay with that. Um, however, I do notice that these lines are not showing up. So the reason for that is the scale. So let's go back in and see if we can find a better one. Let's go to other, let's go to load and let's see if there's one like, let's see, that was a 0.5 X. There actually is no smaller than that. So I'm going to say, leave it. Um, that's not a big deal. I don't think. All right. I, I'll know if my students put that on there or not. All right. Oh, and we also missed this part over here. So you're going to go same thing. If I draw from here to here, whoops, this is going to go over by one quarter. That's going to go over by one quarter. And let's see if we can go off of here to here and here to here. Those will also go over by one quarter and they will get changed to center lines. Okay. They're the center of circles. All right, so you get something like this. So this part is done. I'm okay with that, okay? You change these to center lines and you're all done. Um, 3D model, okay? What you're going to do, you can actually steal it from this. I would use two different documents completely. Uh, if you're one of my students, you're only paying attention to this part. You're not actually drawing this part because we don't have the software. Um, but for everyone else, if you guys are working on 3D modeling and you're trying to do the basics, I do have a separate video that shows you just the 3D modeling of this drawing. Um, or you can just follow along in here. It's the same thing. All right. So what I would do is notice from the last drawing that we just did that we are on top right now, but we don't usually draw the top first unless that drawing has the most or that view has the most detail in it. I would say this one has the most detail in it because you'd get this part out of the way by extruding this whole thing. And then you would just have to round the end. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this view and I'm going to control C copy that. Then I'm going to actually uh, erase everything. Well, before you do that, make sure you do a save as. All right, save as, save it as 3D2 ortho, okay? And then you can close it and then start a brand new one. Um, or you can erase what's in it. And you're going to change this to the front. And you're going to do a control V for paste and click that down on the front. And then we can get rid of these lines. You don't need this stuff when you're doing 3D modeling. All right, we needed this. Now I would go back to the top. I'd go to the bottom right corner and I get this as my front face. Before I move on, I have to select everything and type join. That's going to make a polyline. Okay. Pay attention to the numbers. Nine objects converted to one polyline. We always want one polyline. If it says goes to two polylines or three or five, it's wrong. But if it goes to one, it's good. Uh, nine to one. Should I have nine? Always count. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is correct. Okay. Um, so the next step here is going to be to change my tools to 3d basics by clicking that little gear down there. Take this extrude. I believe the depth was 2.75 or two and three quarters. doesn't matter if you go forward or backward in this situation. Let's just double check that depth. Ooh, it's only two and one quarter. I'm sorry. So let's back that up. Oh, I undid my join as well. There we go. All right. Extrude 2.25. Sorry about that. Uh, you're going to use a new tool called fillet edge. Okay. So it's similar to fillet. Fillet is for rounding uh, the corner of lines. If this is a line and that's a line, you can fill it the two when you're in a 2D view. When you're in a 3D view and you're trying to round the corner of a 3D model, that tool is called fillet edge. 
and it works the same way. Radius. Remember this circle out here was a radius of 1 and 1 over 8. So now I'm not clicking the two lines though because you'll see it does something like this. What I am going to do, radius 1 and 1 over 8, is I'm going to click the edge because remember it's called fillet edge. What is the edge that you want to round? I want to round this one and I want to round this one. Enter twice. Okay, so if you hit enter twice it saves it and you get something like this. Our 3D model is only missing one thing now, the void on the inside. So now I could do a couple different things here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a line. I'm going to draw from the top to the top, looking at these intersections right here, because that's a point that you can snap to. Uh, you can use offset in here as long as you reset to the top and then go to the bottom right corner. You can use offset across the top. So the spacing for that offset was... 5 eighths between this part uh, center of that circle and the center of this circle. So we're going to go offset 5 over 8 enter and you're going to get something like this. Now remember you can use the orbit tool to look around the 3D model. You can fill this instead of 2D wireframe into like conceptual to see if it's a solid just to double check your work. But anytime you're working you're going back to 2D wireframe. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw those small circles. So we can do circle. We're going to do it at this midpoint. And that's going to be a 3 8 radius. Same thing here. 3 8 radius. So it's very similar to what we were doing before drawing the views. But you're doing it on top of a surface. A 3D model surface. Line. Line. Get rid of your dummy lines. And then now question is what am I going to do with these four this is technically a separate 3d model I have to make a 3d model in here and then use a tool called subtract to subtract where they both line up with each other okay where they where they are both inside of each other so I'm going to be making a 3d model inside of a 3d model which means that remember when I was back on the last step when I drew the front face I had to join that before I could extrude it so if I plan on extruding this I have to join it first it says 4 to 1. 4 to 1 is good. That's one polyline. Extrude. Negative 1 half. And the reason why it's negative 1 half is because the surface here from top to bottom is 1 half of an inch. Okay? So now, again, I have a 3D model inside of a 3D model. So if I go to conceptual, it'll still look like it's filled in. There's no hole there yet. There's just two 3D models. If I go back to 2D wireframe, I can use a tool called subtract. And the way this tool works is you say, okay, what do you want to subtract from, which is going to be the main model, and then you hit enter. And what do you want to subtract? That's going to be the small model. Enter. It'll look exactly the same on 2D wireframe because the edges are all there. But when I go to conceptual, you'll see that the hole is cut out. And if we were in the class and we were printing, we'd go to hidden. We'd put our name on the paper. We'd probably put some line weights on there too. And then we would print that out. All right. So that's it for that. Let's see. If we were in the web app, um, the only difference would be that when you guys were changing your line types. Let's try to reload. Hang on one sec. All right. So if you had a line and you were trying to change the line type of it, you guys already know the other differences. Offset, you know, instead of typing your distance first, you're going to click the line you want to offset first, and then you move it in the direction you want to move it, and then you type your distance. Uh, when you're trying to change line types, you go to properties, you go to uh, line type, okay, and then you're going to find center or hidden, okay. That's pretty much it. That's the difference between the two. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. This was another video on the AutoCAD web app and the software and the difference between the two doing orthographic views, all right? So I'll see you guys in the next one. I appreciate it. See ya.